Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the channel. Now in today's video, I'm going to be taking you behind the scenes and showing you the breakdown of that shot, that slow motion shot that you just seen at the beginning of this video. If you want to see exactly how that was done, I'm going to break down the camera, I'm going to break down the lighting and everything else that helped to make that shot possible. So if you want to see more of that, stick around until the end of the video. What I'm going to start with is the props. So we have the product, aka the whiskey. We have a glass with some in it or something that looks like it. It's actually rum in this glass. It's kind of sacrilege to waste rum, but yeah. And we're gonna have some ice to drop in there. What else we have? We've got the surface, we've got the table, uh, which is this uh, bit of plywood that I'm using to create a more of a, a natural effect, a more of a, a darker wood tone um, for this shot right here. And next up is the lighting. And lighting is very crucial with respect to high speed filming. And we're filming at a thousand frames per second today. So we have these very bright LED panels just here. We've got two, one on either side. If you want to see more about these lights, um, they're DIY lights that I made myself. You can see more on the channel there. Just uh, have a look at that video. Uh, what else we got? We got this backlight in the background here. Let's bring it up. This is the Aperture 300D with a Fresnel 2X. Um, and uh, orange gel at the front here. So that is the backlight and that's gonna just, you know, just give it a rim light, backlight the, the, the liquid and the bottle from behind without actually seeing it in the shot. And the fourth light that we have over here is the 600D and that's gonna be lighting up the background. And we have a special attachment at the front of this. I'm just gonna quickly show you that. Now this is the accessory that's fitted at the front of that uh, light and essentially it's a, a spotlight mount and you can um, kind of put various cobos in between so for that one we have uh, a window that's a window cut out here this is kind of designed for photography and designed for flash photography really um this is what i have at the moment and this is what you know i'm using in this particular video and basically what you do is take any lens that you have preferably a zoom lens because that gives you a little bit more flexibility, a little bit more options. And you just attach it to the front of this and you can adjust the focus of that beam um, and uh, you can adjust the zoom as well. So you can make it bigger or smaller if you did have a zoom lens attached to here. Now my only problem or my only concern with using a lens at the front of this particular one because it wasn't really designed for video and continuous light is the fact that this gets really hot and the light output coming from this is quite hot. So you don't really want to destroy your lens by add, you know attaching it to the front of a very hot thing. But like I say, this is what I'm using in the interim until I get a proper um, aperture spotlight mount. The so next up is the pneumatics and we're going to be using this pneumatic gripper right here this air activated gripper to release the ice into the glass um, and that's just by commanding it with a switch and i've got my apprentice here today there he is so mason's going to be helping me out with this part today and it's just a matter of operating the switch and it opens and closes the jaw so do you want to give that a little go and open and just like that so we have an extra arm an extra hand that is out of shot um, that's just ready to drop that into the glass. Next on the list is the camera system. And we're using the Kronos HD 2.1 to film today, because as I mentioned before, it's a thousand frames per second. And this is the system that we have in studio. So that's what we're gonna be using today. So we have a camera, first of all, this is the Kronos here. And I'm using a manual lens today. So it's a Zine 35mm manual focused lens with a uh, matte box attached to the front. On the side here, we have this for the wireless trigger. So I've attached a wireless trigger so we can remotely trigger, start and stop this because we really only have five seconds to capture all of this action. So we need to be able to start and stop this as efficiently as possible, especially without touching the camera as well. So we're not trying to introduce any shake to the camera system itself by physically pressing the button at the top. So you may or may not have noticed during the shot that the focal point changes. So when the shot starts, the bottle is out of focus. And as the splash happens, the bottle and the label comes directly in the focus. And the way we're achieving that is by using this wireless uh, follow focus system. This is a Tilter Nucleus M, I believe. So we're pulling focus off camera 
as the shot happens. So that's what is uh, mounted on this side of the setup. Now, once we recorded our footage and we're ready to offload it, we're just using um, an SSD that we've got mounted right at the top here to offload the files from here. Um, last but not least at the top, we have a wireless transmitter. That's a wireless video transmitter so that we can uh, have a monitor, an external monitor that isn't uh, attached to the camera. So we can have a preview and we can also see on the playback, you know, just give it a bigger view on the, on the monitor to see what we're doing there. So that is the camera setup and it's just on a tripod. So this is the monitor that I've mentioned before. It's uh, getting a wireless signal from that transmitter on the camera. Uh, we're displaying the results on here. So we can have a look, we can have a look at the preview, we can have a look at the playback, just to make sure that, you know, we're seeing, what we're seeing is what we're getting. We can make any tweaks and adjustment based on an image from a bigger screen. screen. That's the whole idea. And on my little tray here, I've got the wireless follow focus wheel. So this is where I'm pulling focus manually from, I say manually, but wirelessly. So set a point A and a point B on here. And basically just going from one extreme to the next and hits point A, point B perfectly. Uh, also on here is my, my switches for my lights so I can turn them on and off remotely. It's very bright. Um, and my trigger, wireless trigger for the camera as well. So I'm kind of operating all of that from here in addition to the switch for the pneumatic. So that was, this, that's operated from, you know, from here as well. So essentially you kind of need, even if you got all of that, some extra hands, depending on what it is you're doing. And uh, that's one of the reasons why I've mounted this on it. So if I've got to operate this by myself, I've got two hands free per se. So I'll trigger the camera and then switch the pneumatics and pull the focus, stop the camera all within a matter of five seconds because that's how much time that we have to play with. So those are the tools and the equipment that I've used to actually achieve this shot. Um, you don't have to have all of it, but to be honest, a lot of it helps with accuracy, with time, with repeatability, especially with the uh, pneumatic dropper and you know having an extra screen, having a follow focus, you know, all of it goes into making that shot it might not seem it when you look at the actual end result, but you know, there's quite a few things that can go into and go into behind the scenes to making that happen. So there's going to be a lot more content like this coming. And if that is something that you are interested in, then make sure that you are subscribed to the channel. <laughs> well, you heard it, but that's it for me for today, guys. Uh, hope you enjoyed that and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.